Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to number seven of the Capoeira 2020 webinar series. So this webinar today is about the use of the Kep server, OPC server with VMs, clusters and clouds. Here's the agenda. We'll be looking at the various system requirements for different environments for running Kep server. So the first one is a standard Windows environment, and then a VMware environment, a cluster environment, and a cloud environment. And then towards the end, we'll look at various topologies that you could employ. This webinar is designed for people who need to know about how to use VMs and clusters, adding reliability, perhaps people who are maintaining systems that employ a kept server, OPC server, or perhaps project engineers who are designing solutions where they want to design reliability and resilience in from the start, and perhaps um, IT or cybersecurity engineers who are planning resilience and recovery strategies for their, for their company, for their organization. So let's first of all look at the license requirements, the system requirements for the Kep server in a standard Windows environment. Kep server can be run on very modest hardware. It doesn't need much power, much RAM, or much hard disk space. Uh, it runs on all Windows recent versions, so Windows 7 upwards, and pretty much all the recent Windows server builds. Uh, you can also run it on blind PCs, which are PCs which are fanless and sealed in an enclosure for very harsh environments where perhaps you've got a lot of dust ingress or you need a high IP rating. So again, we've seen that quite a lot. And there are now two versions of Kep Server for the living at the edge. So this is uh, this is for use with machines or systems which are uh, living on the edge of an IoT type of application. You can get a Windows build or a Linux build. And this is designed for people who are, are building these types of solutions. So if we use on VMs, again, we get asked this question quite a lot in tech support. And you know, can I run a uh, kept server in my VM? If your kept server build is uh, 5.20 onwards or any version of V6, you can run it on a VM, VMware or Hyper-V. There's certain things you need to do within the VM or Hyper-V environment to make sure the, the license doesn't break if you migrate or move between VMs. Uh, the main thing is you need to employ a static MAC address. Um, if you do revert to a, a snapshot with a VM, um, it will break the license, but you can recover it within the license utility within Kep Server. So you, that's something you can do for yourself. Um, cloning, however, is not permitted. Uh, that's a, a, a license violation and actually it will break the license and it cannot be repaired. You'd need to approach us and we'd need to speak to Kep Server to repair that license for you. Um, so all the things you'd normally expect in, in a VMware environment. Uh, there's a, a whole load of uh, technical documents available uh, about this, which uh, which you can access on the Kepware website and we have access to those as well. So if you need to have any questions about that, Come and come and see, speak to us. In a cluster environment, um, we see people using Kepware in clusters um, quite a lot. Um, with, if those people who are not familiar with clusters, it's a pair of independent servers with shared resources, and it's managed by a Windows cluster admin uh, application. Um, there are various grades of software from uh, software that's made specifically for clusters, and then you have software which is cluster aware, and then you have software which is cluster compatible. Cluster aware software is software that has specific links in it to be managed in a cluster environment using the Windows um, admin software. Um, Kepware is not cluster aware, it is cluster compatible, which means it's, it's fine to live in a cluster environment, but it uh, doesn't have the hooks in to be managed by the cluster management uh, suite. If you are using Kep Server in a cluster environment, normally it's two PCs, and you need Kepware Kepa licenses for both of those PCs in the cluster. Um, if you are buying for a cluster, let us know at the time of purchase because we can apply a, 
uh, a price reduction on the second license of the pair um, when you're when you're buying it for a, 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 a duty standby type of arrangement or a cluster type of arrangement. So let us know that if that applies to you. For a cloud environment, Cup Server can be run on various cloud platforms, Microsoft Azure, Amazon EC2, and Google Compute. Again, special care needs to be taken when you're running it in these environments to make sure the license doesn't break. Um, only version six of Cup Server is supported. You can't run it on the later versions of five like you can with VMs. Um, again, you need a static MAC address, and there are various other non-default settings that need to be set, uh, which are specific to each platform. If you're using Keb Server in a cloud-hosted uh, type of arrangement, uh, speak to us and we'll provide you with the technical documents you need to, to get it working in that environment. So now we're going to look at various topologies that can be employed that have an element of VMs or redundant or clusters in them. Here's your basic OPC UA topology. So you have your PLC on the left-hand side that has the data. You have your Keb Server OPC UA server. And on the right, you have an OPC UA client. And the client is connecting to the OPC UA server. The OPC UA server is polling data from the PLCs and providing it back to the client. The second topology employs a feature of Keb Server called media level redundancy. And with media level redundancy, you effectively create two channels to the same piece of hardware in Keb Server. One is the primary channel and one is the secondary channel. And it gives Keb Server the ability to reach the hardware via two different paths. Um, this is good for applications or PCs where you have dual CPUs, you have dual comms cards. This also assumes you're connecting to the PLC using two different network paths, perhaps a, a red network or a blue network, as I've shown there. Um, so Keb Server, with most of the drivers, can employ this media level redundancy. The OPC UA client connects to Keb Server. It always uses the primary naming convention to get the values. But if Keb Server is aware that the primary channel is no longer there, it'll actually pull the hardware via, through, through the secondary channel, um, but it's still employing the names of the primary channel. So that means that Keb Server has two bites of the cherry for getting hold of the data. Um, Again, the OPC client on the right-hand side doesn't need to be aware this is happening. Keb Server does it, and it's making the decisions to, to uh, move between primary and secondary when it sees the primary is, is not available. This is a somewhat more complex topology. Here you are employing two servers, server one, server two. On the right-hand side, we have an OPC UA client, and I'm assuming in this diagram that OP, that 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 OPC UA client has no redundant ability. So the OPC UA client there can only ask for data using a single path. So it's talking to a Kep server um, OPC build on the same PC. And that Kep server on that server, which I'm called server A, is using media level redundancy to reach out to the two servers on the left-hand side, so the top server, server one, or the bottom server, server two. So the OPC UA client will ask the Kep server to its left to get its data. The Kep server will ask server one, and server one will get the data from the PLC. If server one is no longer there, the media level redundancy on that Kep server on server A will allow it to ask down through the channel through server two to get the data. Again, the OPC UA client here is not making any switching. The switching is being done via the Kep server using media level redundancy. This is the same type of topology, but using a Windows cluster. So you have on the right hand side, you have two instances of Kep server and you have two instances of the OPC UA client, all managed in the environment of a Windows cluster. Each of those, server A and server B, have a build very much like the previous slide. The, so the uh, taking Kep server um, on server A, it's able to con connect through to server one to get its data or server two. And if the cluster bounces down to the server B, then server B's Kep server can reach through 
kept server one to get uh, its data or kept server on server two to get its data. So this is a, an employment of the media level redundancy and dual server, but also in a cluster environment. So you have lots of paths of resilience there, lots of paths of uh, redundancy. So that type of topology should be fairly bulletproof. So here is a, a recap of the agenda. It's a fairly brief webinar today, just covering a very narrow subject of uh, VMs and clusters. So we've talked about the standard system requirements for Keb server, and we've looked at the VMware requirements, the cluster requirements and cloud requirements, and a few topologies. Uh, my name is Dave Hammond from Mac Solutions. Uh, I'm the product manager for the Kepware software in the UK. We've been the technical reseller for the Kepware software since 2001. Um, not only do we sell the Kep server software, we sell two utility softwares that, uh, that use OPC from a company called Cogent and uh, uh, an OPC router software from a company from Germany called Inray. Uh, these are utilities that sit on top of Kep server and are very useful at giving connectivity to lots of different disparate systems that you, you find um, on the shop floor, but also further up the, uh, the topology of, a, of an organization, things like SAP and MES and things of that nature. So if you need that type of connectivity, come and speak to us. Also, you might want to um, sit on uh, webinar number 11, because that is specifically about that type of connectivity, this connectivity that sits on top of Kep server. So thank you very much for everyone for um, attending today's webinar, and I hope you all stay safe and well. Thank you.